So hello captains of Amban welcome to the first episode of Beyond the Highlights where we host the ISL and I League personalities to talk about their ongoing season So if you're a football enthusiast just like me and love to learn from footballing personalities make sure to subscribe to our channel And today with us we have Mr Jay Gupta jinki tareef mere muh se aap bahut baar sun chuke ho raat ke show mein So Jay how have you been I'm great I'm great great thank thankful to be here thank you so much for having me thank you and jay i will say one thing a whole lot of people are watching you with a whole lot of expectation so again a very very big congratulations on your breakthrough season but the first talking point that i wanted to ask for quite a long time is after spending time abroad when you was when you stepped on the field for fc goa you mentioned that i finally found my calling so how do you reflect on your transition into an I, isl side through the duran cup campaign uh so for me i feel like uh the transition it became so smooth in the way how things uh came across because uh i came in i initially came in as a center back for for manolo but uh there there were already lingering thoughts about me playing in the left back position from when i was with jusap back in spain so the duran cup acted as a perfect platform for me to be able to exercise the left back position and for us to see if i can actually go through with it and it came off as a blessing for me so to understand that okay i can actually go through with it you know this can be something that i can explore and uh, it could could possibly be my position so it was a really good blessing and uh, yeah i'm glad i'm glad how things went through you found your breakthrough moment in indian football in the match winner against orissa fc you then celebrated the goal with the head coach manolo marquez my personal favorite and the coaching staff in the dugout so what was going through your mind when you saw the ball going in and what was the atmosphere in the dressing room after that uh so first uh, uh, through my mind i mean it took a long time to process that goal for sure it was my first goal in indian football and uh, i think uh, at that moment i was really happy that i was scoring the winner in the first place i can say that uh, we were basically projecting the vigor of the fans the fans were absolutely electric uh, and we were going till the end so to be able to get that goal in the end i feel like it it was all a team it was the team spirit and uh, uh, to be able to be the one to show that through was it was a blessing and in that first goal i feel like i needed to go to the dugout and celebrate with everybody because it was truly the hard work of everybody you know not just me so it was it was a celebration for everybody i mostly see when players got a chance like that in 90th minute people do not want to take the risk they try to say let's let me pass the ball to any other player let him try to do something or let's let's try to play our way through so what was going on in your mind because i also said this there are world class strikers who wouldn't take that risk of taking a curler that to on the top corner in the last moment so what was going through your mind when you took the shot uh honestly i was i was working with muscle memory uh so this is not the uh, it's not the first time i've actually taken one of these shots and not the first time that i have scored one of these goals so back in europe i've had a couple of opportunities and well and scored a goal like this it was resounding to be able to get back to that space and be able to take one of the shots again but the only thing was that was in my mind was okay i'm here again and i have the same opportunity so i was working on muscle memory and it it went through perfectly and i was really happy for that i was really happy that you know uh i was able to find that memory and uh, you know put it through perfectly to get my three the three points the day you scored that goal i still remember i was doing my show in late night fc goa fans it was a double header basically it was played in the evening people were still talking about it people were celebrating you gave the fc goa fans a whole lot of joy by scoring that one i can assure you that thank you yeah it's 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 truly really a blessing i'm really grateful really grateful and also you are a fan favorite but again coming to the next part of the show as well that is in our podcast episode with manolo marquez when he came to our show he highlighted and i personally like that comment a wee bit very much that is i prefer to train the b team as he wanted his training sessions to be of high intensity so could you share your insights into his training methodologies and also his impact on you until now uh so about that comment it's basically about how he insists on the squad depth that we have and we are really really proud of it 
So basically, us coming in after a match, uh, some of us would be gassed and uh, would not uh, train up to the intensity that we would, right? Some of the players after some matches. So uh, what he meant there was he loves training the the players that would be that start on the bench or you know that are pushing to be able to get uh, uh, a call up for the for for the lineup, and that in turn pushes us to be able to do more. So I feel like that's what he's addressing. Uh, the fact that the players who can come in after us are doing so well and they're pushing so much that it pushes us and that makes our squad depth really, really dangerous. And that's what he loves and that's what we love as well. Of course, always, we love that. Manolo sir said very interesting point. That is the most important thing in a young player is the discipline because it helps to take the player to the next level. So what is your take on discipline for a young player and how does it impact a young player's career so early on? Uh, I think uh, my whole uh, idea of uh, in uh, over the past six, seven years that I've been Euro I've been in Europe has been discipline. Uh, I have uh, it's been it's been quite a road for me. I've been grinding for the past six, seven years with, and uh, I feel like discipline has been the one thing that has kept me going. It's not uh, easy to be able to uh, go to a different country and uh, to be able to, you know, grind it out the whole time. So I feel like uh, this word discipline really comes into the factor. And uh, to be honest, to be able to go as as a football player, to uh, to be able to play those many years, like you've seen some of the people like Sunil Chetri and, you know, Coach Guramangi, he keeps telling me discipline is the only way to go. You have to be disciplined, and uh, uh, that's that's the only thing that keeps you do keeps you doing what you love for a long, long time. You have played in Spain and Portugal, and one thing I have learned from players there, we have interviewed quite a few players who are playing in Spain and Portugal right now, and they always said that the fundamentals are being given a whole lot of focus in Spain and Portugal. The basics like passing, the basics like receiving. The basics like your positioning right now on the pitch and how to scan the pitch. Even if you're a center back in India, we often doesn't give the center back that much opportunity to play the ball up front and try to be the first one, the first creator. But in Europe, we have seen that center backs are now also the first creators. So during your time at Spain and Portugal, how did it influence you as an individual footballer? And how is it so much different from the Indian grassroots? So in Portugal, I was for a longer time, obviously, I was there for six years. As soon as I reached there, it was more about me addressing, me getting to know their system of play. And uh, I think playing in Europe, it really helps you understand how to be able to not uh, lose your energy and to be able to play through the 90 minutes plus extra time tactically intact. To be able to be in the right place at the right moment, it, it, it trains your mind to be able to be concentrated and make the right decision. And that, I feel like, is one of the biggest things that I learned in the grassroots in Europe. Uh, about Spain, um, that's a very special thing for me. In Spain, uh, I felt like I finally got my uh, love back for, for the game. Uh, so in Spain, I was uh, training, I had a personal trainer in Spain who was about uh, 52 years old and uh, he, every single day I used to train with him in the morning and uh, it felt, he used to, he used to, every single day as we got under the pitch, he used to change my mind about uh, a lot of things and he used to keep me going every single second and he literally made me feel my connection with the ball again. So you you talk about how Spain is natural for football, right? You don't know that up until you go there and you feel it. And that my personal trainer, God bless him, he made me feel that connection to the ball and he made me understand what it is to have passion for this game. Even even after the games there, we used to go for recovery sessions the next day, and that man used to run more than me and for hours. And to be able to see that, I'm a really competitive person, and uh, sometimes when people are pushing more, I push even harder. But to be able to see him push more than me, even at that age, 
I was just mesmerized and uh, it really, really made me realize what a privilege it is to play this game. And I will, I will remember that for the rest of my life. The recovery after the game, because we have seen the big names in European football as well. Mohamed Salah, who is rarely injured. He said that the reason behind his good injury record is he put so much effort in the recovery after the match as well. So this is the question I wanted to ask. How important is it to give your body the rest after a rigorous 90 minutes? And how much role does a recovery play for a footballer? Because we have seen footballers taking cold baths, massages after the game. So, totally uh, give it out to you. Yeah, I, 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 this is a very important point for me because for the past six, seven years, God willing, I've had uh, very less injuries. And one of the, one of the reasons is because I followed uh, some of the teachings of some of the big players like Cristiano Ronaldo and Mohamed Salah in making sure that my recovery routines are intact not just after the matches. Obviously, it's very important after the match because that's when you're most uh, uh, susceptible to injuries, but also in your everyday routine after your training sessions. So at the end of the day, after your training sessions, to be able to recover well and get that amount of sleep, your muscles to be able to be recovered, you to be able to know your body and to be able to know when you need to take a step back, that is very important because I feel like sometimes some of the youngsters just uh, blast off because of the amount of energy they have and they just want to do everything in a day, you know. And uh, Rome was not built in a day. That's not just an expression. And now coming to the final, final question of this podcast session, that is, what advice would you give to the Indian junior players who are still waiting for their first team opportunity? Uh, for them, it's... Uh, it's a different I, I would i would say it's a different it's a different world in india uh, i mean we're still getting into the process where india is becoming uh, football is becoming a more popular sport in india and but it's it's streamlining really really fast so that's a great thing i feel like i want to tell them uh, to be able to understand i feel like i want to tell them you to study the sport to understand the sport to uh, focus on recovery, the thing we spoke about, uh, to keep dreaming every day. Discipline, another thing we spoke about, discipline, very, very important. Uh, and one of the most important things that you need in India is to be ready when the time comes. When your opportunity arises, you have to be ready. Uh, I feel like uh, sometimes uh, due to bad luck, Sometimes it's very difficult for somebody who's doing really well to miss his opportunity because he's not ready in that very moment. And I have seen that in some instances. So I feel like this is something that I need to stress on uh, to be able to be ready in every single moment. Because if you're ready all the time, you'll be ready when the opportunity arises. So that's what I want to say. So captains, that was all for today. We need to end our session here. Thanks, Mr. Jay Gupta, for being with us today. To all our viewers, thanks a lot for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more such podcasts like this. And until next time, it's goodbye from our band.